YouTube. Where you at? YouTube, where you at? Oh, oh, there you are. Hey, hey, what's up, YouTube? What's up, everybody? Okay, this is the piano guy, and uh, I'm in the house. I'm in the house. So, at first glance, you may think I'm about to do an un unboxing in sort of kind of way I am, but if, uh, if you watch my Instagram couple videos that I posted on there, you will know that what's in this box is uh, a pair of sneakers that some guy in Florence, South Carolina tried to scam out of me, rip me off and get my sneakers for free and more than likely was going to probably resell them. So this video today, what I'm doing is, and, and, and I'm, I'm kind of getting away from some of the editing things that I would normally like to do because I want to get straight into it. I want to get right to the point. And I want to uh, make this video, hopefully, and it will help uh, other people out there that's in the sneaker community or that's just trying to get a collection together to avoid getting scammed. So this video is about how to avoid a sneaker scam. So uh, in this box is uh, a pair of Royal uh, Jordan uh, Royal Ones that I picked up on Saturday when they dropped. And uh, this is a size 10 and a half. And uh, it was an extra pair, so um, I, I placed it on my Kixify account, um, hoping to, to sell it. Um, so I, I, a guy reached out to me, and I'm going to give you the, the whole inside uh, scoop on what this scam was that he was trying to run on me. So let me tell you about this scam, because if it hasn't happened to you, it, it potentially can. And I want to give you all the specific details and the particular uh, parts of this scam and how he tried to run it on me and how it came about that I discovered that he was fake and he was a fake buyer and he was trying to rip me off for, for these shoes, these sneakers. Okay, so first of all, I placed a, the sneaker online on the Kixify account and I got a email in my Kixify account, a message uh, to me uh, to call me and the number was there. And the number was in numbers and letters. So it might have spelled out, it might have had the number eight, and then it might have it spelled out the, the actual word four, then it might have had the number three, then it might have spelled out the next number. And that's how the number was listed. So I thought maybe that's, they did it on purpose, trying to be, you know, clever or, you know, whatever. So I, um, I said, I don't want to wait till the morning. It was kind of late when that happened. And I don't want to wait till the morning. This is what I'm saying to myself to call this person back. I want to go ahead and reach out to them now. Let them know I'm a credible seller. That, uh, that you know, I'm not a procrastinator. I don't want to have any type of delay in downtime. So I reached right out to them since they um, emailed me and sent that message to me. And I called. No one answered, so I left the message. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, sometime after that, a little time passed by, um, I got a text message. And uh, the text message um, was an offer, a purchase offer on the shoes. And this is what the offer was. $400, including shipping, but they wanted overnight shipping. Now, all of this occurred on a Sunday. So, UPS, FedEx, those places like that are closed. So I know, because I've dealt with Office Depot, Office Max in the past, I know that I can go there and ship a package, although the package will not get picked up until the next day, the next business day being a Monday. So when they reached out to me, I was like, man, overnight, that sounded like that could be kind of expensive is what I'm thinking to myself. So I thought about it and I pondered on it and I sent them a text message back saying that uh, let me look into uh, some shipping options and I'll let you know uh, first thing uh, that I can tomorrow. Um, and like I say, this would have been Sunday. Excuse me, I'm sorry, Sunday in the daytime. So I uh, went online, I Googled, and I kind of uh, went to, to the, um, I think it was the UPS, yeah. I went to the UPS site and I kind of put some numbers in, estimated the size and the weight of the package to see what it would potentially cost me to ship a package overnight. And it was, it was a nice, hefty price. So I said, no, that's not an option. So I called over to uh, Office Depot and I asked about uh, two-day guaranteed shipping, uh, which if the package shipped out on Monday, it would get to him 
in South Carolina by Wednesday. And the cost, um, the per guy told me was about $35. It turned out it ended up being like $42.98 or something like that. Let me see, $42.80, uh, which I was okay with that. So it was a little bit more than what I uh, anticipated my shipping cost to be, but I could live with that in order to get the shoes to him and, and go ahead and move the shoes from my possession into his possession. So I informed him about that, the two-day express shipping, guaranteed shipping, two-day uh, guaranteed and he was okay with that. And so as it kind of started evolving now, um, he said, well, uh, what is your, this is what's, where things start getting a little, I mean, just really iffy. What is your PayPal email? He wanted to know. Now, I have it set up on my Kixify account where if you just add the sneaker to the cart and you check out, it will inform me of who the buyer is, the address, shipping, everything is right in there. Just like if you went online to Foot Locker, Foot Action, or any other uh, major retailer. And uh, then it will, when you pay, it will forward the money right to my PayPal account. However, he didn't do that. Uh, so I'm thinking, okay, he wanted to just send me the money directly to PayPal. In that regard, I would be okay with that because then I would... Um, I would not have the 8% uh, commission fee uh, to Kixify, and I can kind of keep some money in my pocket uh, for the sale. So I sent him my email uh, for my PayPal, and like almost immediately, I mean, I don't even think five minutes passed by, um, there was a message sent to my PayPal account. Um, uh, to my email, rather, to my email, uh, my PayPal, my email that's attached to my PayPal account. And the email said that this person um, was, uh, had sent me money, they had processed a payment of $400, um, and it had all the PayPal logo in the email, it had all the things that made it look like a legitimate PayPal email, except in the uh, address where the, from the sender that should have been said PayPal, you know, some type of PayPal information. It had this guy's information, and there was a general name. He used the name Mike Brown in the in the heading. But then everything else after that said that our customer, our client, Mike Brown, has uh, uh, forwarded to your account. And then it began to say things like, um, because of the type of transaction it seals, it could be the dollar amount or that you are a new PayPal um, um, cus client, it, it, stuff like that. It said that you uh, will have to do one or two things. Your money is going to be in a pending status, and you would have to do one of three things in order to release your money out of this pending status. So in the and it was two emails he sent me. So in the first email, it said I would either have to upload a tracking number before they would actually release the funds and then it would take them three days to do this. Now, mind you, initially he asked me to to afford the package to him overnight. I said, I can't do that, but I could do two-day guarantee. That would still be within that three-day window, which will allow him to get the package before my money would get released, before, before the funds would get released. So I said, well, man, if I can get this tracking number uploaded in here right away, then I can try to get the expedite getting the funds released. I said, I like that option. Second option that said in the, in the, in the email was you can um, wait till the seller gets the package and then he comes online and he verifies that he got the package in good condition and he's satisfied with this, with this purchase. Then, in that case, my funds would be released in seven days. The third option was if I do not, none of the first two options and I just don't do anything at all and I just let time pass by, within in 21 days, if they don't hear anything back from the, 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 from the purchaser, from the buyer, then in 21 days, my funds would automatically be released. So those were my three options. In the second email, it reiterated some of the same things, except in the first email, it did not have his his uh, shipping address. In the second email, it said all of that, but it included the sh his name and the shipping address and where to send uh, the package to, the sneakers to. So I went right down to Office Depot, uh, got there before they closed on Sunday, 
and I, I, I bought a box. I bought the things that I needed. They had some things I could stuff in the box. Um, I put the, the sneakers, brand new, brand new, um, brand new sneakers. I put them inside of this box because uh, I want to be a, a real uh, credible and a um, high quality uh, seller. I make sure that I double boxed it. Uh, I packaged uh, some things in it. And you'll see it when I pull, these, pull them out the box. You'll see the care and the detail that I took to make sure that uh, the sneakers would arrive to him in the original box without any damage or anything to it. So, um, once I got the outer box, I purchased it. I, I got everything put in there. This is my shipping receipt. I had that all. Um, address, everything put in the, uh, the system to send it. Now, uh, mind you, because of uh, the cost to do uh, FedEx, uh, UPS was an option, but the cost was going to be a little bit more to do FedEx. So I went with USPS, the United States Postal Service, and the Priority Express Guaranteed 1, but Guaranteed 2-Day uh, Delivery. That's what I went with, and you'll see that right here. I don't know if you can see that, but I went with Priority Mail Express Guaranteed to get it there in two days. So he would have definitely got the package by Wednesday. So as um as I did that and I, I, I was about to leave, I wanted him to get the tracking number, so I texted him the tracking number. Now when I texted him the tracking number, he responded back. We had been having this ongoing conversation. He responded back and said, um, uh, you can't use USPS man, you sir, you have to use uh UP, I mean FedEx because USPS will not deliver to my address. Now I'm thinking, what? That don't make sense. What do you mean USPS won't deliver to your address, but FedEx will? So I, I, I sit there in a moment in my car outside of the, the store, Office Depot, and I said, this not making sense. So I went back in the store to talk to the guy that was the uh, clerk at the, at the desk. And, and I asked him, I said, um, you know, I used to work here and I shipped many packages. Would this, uh, would the system have allowed me to enter his address and us to process a shipping label if uh, USPS does not deliver to his address? And he, and he verified with me and said, no, it wouldn't even allow us to enter his address and process it through and, and uh, enter uh, and even print a shipping label to put it on the box. I say okay. So as I was going outside, I, I said, "Well, let me go on the USPS since I have a tracking number. Let me go into their system online and just enter the tracking number and see what the actual USPS online service will tell me." And what it said to me was that the package, uh, the information had been received, entered, and it was uh, processed, and the package was waiting to be picked up in order to get shipped and uh, delivered. Which means that basically. USPS had received the information in their system, they accepted it, they processed it, and now all they have to do is on Monday send uh, their deliver their person over, uh, employee over to actually pick up the package from Office Depot and take it with them back to USPS to ship it and have it there within uh, two days or by Wednesday. So this is how I, I, I figured it out. When I got back home, I said, well, let me make sure that the, that the sneaker got taken out of my inventory on my Kixify account. So when I went online and I went into my Kixify account, the sneaker was still posted there. It hadn't been taken out. And I'm like, okay, well, let me go into my order history and all of that on Kixify. Nothing was there. So I started getting, you know, this weird, funny feeling. So I went back to, to the email uh, that's attached to my PayPal account, and I start looking and reading it. And I'm like, okay, well, where can I upload this? tracking number, at least to show them that um, I, I processed this, I got a tracking number, this is a legit, a legit sale on my end, uh, and so they can start getting the process, the ball rolling on getting my funds released uh, in that three-day time. I don't want my funds held up for a week or longer. So I, I clicked on this little link, and throughout the email, and it had where it said about, uh, if you have any questions, click this link, this, that, and the other, and they all had PayPal all these PayPal emblems, everything all over. So I clicked on one, and it didn't take me to the PayPal website. It opened up a, a box. And in that box, it had Mike Brown, his name, uh, a dollar uh, amount, all zeros for a dollar amount, and then it had a button for send money. So now I'm really starting to feel kind of strange about this whole situation, right? 
because I'm starting to get a little bit leery about this transaction. So I went back again and said, well, maybe I missed something, overlooked something in my Kixify account. So I went back to Kixify, looked again, checked again, refreshed it, did all of this, and sure enough, the sneaker, size 10 and a half, Jordan 1, uh, Royal, still posted, had not been taken out of inventory like it's supposed to if the purchaser or the buyer would have actually went through the process and put it in their cart and checked out. So now I say, wait a minute. I open up my actual PayPal account and say, well, let me see if I see a pending transaction there, as such as this email said, and then I can find a way to put this tracking number in here to show PayPal I have shipped this package and that I'm a, I'm a legitimate, this is a legitimate sale. I go on PayPal, I got all zeros. Nothing is showing pending. No activity is showing. I'm going through multiple feet, uh, screens. I'm checking multiple drop-down menus and nothing. All zeros, no pending transactions. Now, I, I don't know, so I say, well, let me just find a phone number and call PayPal, right? So, thank God that PayPal on Sundays is open to 9 o'clock Central Time. And so, it's about 8.30 my time, which would be 7.30 their time. So I called and I got a representative. At first, I checked the the uh, automated system on if I had any pending transactions, any type of activity, zero. So then I, I requested to speak uh, to a actual person representative. A, a nice young lady came on the line. I informed her of the, the sale, all of that, and the information that I've just kind of shared with you. I gave it to her in a nutshell, and I asked her. I say, um, I'm having a feeling that this could be a potential, a possible scam. And she said, that is a scam. She said, that is not how we do business. The minute that anybody makes a payment or do anything, it will automatically post in my PayPal account, in your PayPal account. And even if it's a pending transaction, it will still post. You can still see it. And then you can click on that uh, pending transaction and you can attach the tracking number to that pending transaction. None of that existed in my PayPal account. Now I know. This is a scam. So immediately I start saying, I'm going to get up first thing in the morning. I dropped a video onto my uh, Instagram account, The Piano Guy. That's my Instagram account. And I said, first thing in the morning, I'm going to make sure I get to Office Depot, get my package, and I'm going to call uh, South Carolina, Florence, South Carolina. I'm going to Google and find out which police um, uh, department is closest to that area. So I found the police department in the morning. Um... I, um, yes, I did that first. I called the police station in the morning. It was like 7.30 or something in the morning. It was before 8 o'clock, or it might have been around 7.45 or so. And I got an, an officer. I told him the story. He said, well, let me get this over to a, um, a, 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 a an officer that works that area. So he said, well, have someone call you back. I'm telling you, it wasn't even 15 minutes. I, I mean, props, serious props to the Florence uh, Police Department in South Carolina. Somebody called me back in about 15, 20 minutes, and it was a nice young lady, uh, an officer, and she asked me about what was going on. I gave her all the information, all the details, and this is what she informed me, that in South Carolina, in their area, uh, sneaker scams is a has been a big, huge problem, not just there, but all across the United States, but they are very, very much aware of sneaker scams, and they have had a, a lot of them. A, they have a lot of them. But what happens most of the time is uh, the person actually ends up shipping the sneaker, and then they get involved after they've shipped the sneaker and all this happens. So what happens is they uh, either find an abandoned home, they get an, uh, the address of an abandoned home. And Oh, it's one uh, important thing I need to tell you. When I told the guy about the USPS, so I... I uh, he said that he couldn't get USPS. It had to be FedEx. I, I asked him, can, well, can you tell me why, uh, what the problem is? Because I, I went to him and told him about how I went back in, talked to the clerk, how it wouldn't even process the transaction if it wasn't um, able to be delivered to his address from the United States Postal Service. I said, plus, I have dealt with this particular person. I didn't tell them, tell him it was Office Depot. I said, I've dealt with this company for five years, because I worked there for five years. I didn't tell them that part, but I've dealt with them for five years, and then since I've been away from there, I said, so I've, I've had shipping, done shipping with them for over seven years, I told them, and I've never had not one 
issue. So he then texted me back and said, well, he had he has dogs. Now I'm looking like, what? Dogs? So the United States Postal Service won't deliver to y'all because you have dogs, but FedEx will? And then my mind went to say, put the dogs up in the house. Right? That's what I'm thinking to myself. So I said to him, okay, this is what I said. I texted him back and said, you know what? In that case, I would suggest calling the United States Postal Service, USPS, asking them to hold the package to you because it is possible that the package may arrive on Tuesday and then they have to sort it and do what they do, sort their mail, get everything ready to get delivered, and then it probably it will get to them on, on Wednesday. And he was like, okay. So I was like, okay, we all good. So I'm like, wow, this is really strange dogs. Man, that's not my responsibility. All I have to do is ship the package to you and how you get it on your end, your dogs and all that stuff, put your dogs up. That's your problem. So now to get back to what I was saying, so I have a, a, a really um, strong understanding now that um, when they get these abandoned houses, they don't want to actually get an address where somebody lives just in case the heat comes on them with the police. So they get abandoned houses and they probably camp out there or they sit around when they can kind of, you know, track the package and know when it's arriving, the day it's arriving, you know, so they can have to sit around and wait. And they probably have multiple packages coming from all people that over the United States that they've scammed that have sent them shoes that's coming probably seven, five days a week, right? So, or the cops said they will probably have a house that's up for sale. They'll do that, uh, get the address of a house that's vacant, that's for sale. And then um, they'll just wait out until the package comes. Now, once the package gets there, I formulated this in my mind because I know the officers, officers that I was speaking with on the phone didn't know. But I told them, I said, what I believe they're doing is they're getting these sneakers from people free under the guise and the pretense that they're purchasing them. But when they get them shipped to them, ultimately it's free because they did not pay for them. They scammed and, and suckered people out of them to get them. And then on their end, they're getting a collection together that they're more than likely are selling. So if you got a pair of Cars 4s, you know, that's re retailed for $350, and now we know that Cars 4s is, you know, probably reselling for anywhere from $1,800, $2,000, up to $3,000, possibly more. You know, I don't 100% know that. But, man, you're talking about 100% profit because they didn't pay for the, the sneaker. In my case, the guy offered me uh, $400. Okay, I would have cleared a nice little profit on, on the sale. But he didn't buy the sneaker. It comes to him. He gets it free. Now he turns around and sells it for three, or three fifty, or whatever amount of money he can get out of it, and make having him a nice little inventory going there. So, uh, a couple points to recap this that I, that I want to tell you about to really be aware. And I'm gonna open this box. Thank you, Jesus. I got my my sneakers right. It didn't get shipped. I didn't. You know, the scam didn't work. But is beware of when somebody's asking you to ship overnight beware beware because i'm a sneakerhead you know i love getting my sneakers and yeah and i want to get them as quick as i can when they're shipped but i'm okay with ground you know i'm okay with three to five day delivery you know what i'm saying you know yeah it'd be awesome if i can get them in two days or overnight but i'm okay with ground because i know that's just how the shipping thing goes okay unless you want to pay extra to have them shipped to you and rush and expedite it so beware of anybody that's telling you they want these sneakers shipped overnight. Number two, beware of anybody that's going to just ask you for your PayPal email. Because why would you want to try to the, circumvent the, the process of everything that can protect you as a buyer and try to circumvent all that system and have a more direct approach to the buyer? When you can go through Kixify or eBay or whatever the the, uh, the system, the online processing system is set up, go through there, process a legitimate sale, get your receipt, get your invoice, uh, and get yourself protected on that end that you, you made a legitimate purchase and you got, and it shows what you purchased. So beware of anybody that wants to try to forward you the money directly to your PayPal and circumvent all the other systems, eBay, PayPal, Shopify, whatever you've set up for your online business. Be careful, okay? And number three is be aware of anybody who wants to try to dictate and tell you 
how to ship your package, who you should use, why you can't use this person, why you need to use that. Just be aware of that. That's another red flag right there. And also, look, just look for the little little details. Uh, the, the emails and the correspondence that they send you can look legit. The two emails he sent me showing all the PayPal information look legitimate. But I know, uh, you look for the little small details. Whose name is up in the send category? Is it uh, PayPal? Is it a legitimate source? Or in this case, is it the person that you've been corresponding with? Uh, look for little details like if there are links inside of the email, click on them to see where they take you. Do they take you to the legitimate site, PayPal, legitimate site, wherever, or are they taking you to something that's off, you know? So look for those little specific details like that. Uh, before you ship that package, make sure that your money is no longer in their possession, that it is at least, at least on your end, in your possession, if it's in a legitimate pending uh, status, then according to PayPal, and I've talked to a representative, it is, if it is for some reason in a hold or pending status with PayPal, it will still be in your account. Okay? It will still be in your account. So be, care, be careful, be aware uh, of those little specific details, and know that uh, there are lots of people out there scamming. And if, if somebody is trying to scam you, um, just be do your due diligence and make sure that you cover yourself, protect yourself, because you don't want to lose uh, your sneakers. You know that you, hey, you, we know this channel is sneaker struggles, right? We go through a lot to get these sneakers. To get these um, Jordan ones, I had to get up super early in the morning on Saturday. I was at the mall at like eight oh five, and the stores don't open to ten o'clock, so. I'm putting my time, my work in, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? And so to just do all of that and then get scammed out of my sneakers, I was not feeling that, man. I was not happy about that at all. So, but I thank God and I'm, I'm very happy that um, it didn't go uh, really wrong and bad against me. So as you see, I double boxed the, um, the sneakers. I stuffed the box with all types of paper. Uh, that they had at the store to provide cushion from the box bouncing around inside of this box and potentially uh, causing damage to the box. So, hey, I don't know about you guys, but, it, you know, having sneakers is not just about the sneakers. That's part of it. But also, you know, the box, man. For a lot of us, the box means something. It has some type of nostalgic value to it, you know, some type of iconic value. So whenever you see this box right here, you know it's a one, right? right? A Jordan 1. And here they are, a size 10 and a half. Uh, Jordan one royalty sneakers and still got that smell. You still got that smell. Okay, here we go. Take my finger. Is it hot or not? Touch the shoe. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot, baby. They're hot. They're hot. Hey, so uh, thanks for watching this um, this video um, on how to identify and just be aware of sneaker scammers, okay? So, please, subscribe to my channel, Sneaker Struggles. Uh, follow me. You'll see the links below. Follow me on Instagram, The Piano Guy. I'm on Twitter now as well. I've got a Twitter account set up. Follow me on Twitter, uh, Sneaker Struggles, at JMO Hollywood. So, hey, I'd love to... Uh, be connected to you. So press that uh, thumbs up like button and hey, till next time.